on Friday, March 29th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here at Sitamburuburu. The Deacon Board has scheduled and hereby gives notice that the 5th Regional Annual General Meetings, RAGMs, for the year ended 31st December 2023 will be held both in person and virtually through a Zoom link to be provided for each RAGM for the following dates. Southern Region, which covers Sitam Karen, Athi River, Ngong, Buruburu, Embakasi, Rongai, Kagundo Road, Kitengela, Mombasa, Machakos and Siokimau on 6th of April 2024 starting at 9 a.m. East African time. Sitam East Timor will also join this RAGM. All SITAM registered members are eligible to attend their respective regional meetings. Any AOBs covering the regional matters should be sent to admin at SITAM.org to be received at least seven days before the meeting. God bless you as you plan to attend these governance meetings for the ministry. Under the hand of Deacon Martin Munyu, Church Secretary. Wonderful greetings. You have heard about membership intake in CETA ministries. We actually believe and take people into membership, but also you may ask, how can I join the church as a registered member? One, at least, is we have to register you. Uh, secondly, we have to take you through class 101, as we call it, and then we interview you, and then finally we give you a membership card. But what are the qualifications? One, you must be born again. We believe in that. And then also you must be baptized in waters of immersion. And then afterwards, we take you into membership. But also you shouldn't have been in the assembly like one year, uh, one year at least in the assembly. And in that way, you'll be able to be taken into membership. We have three categories of membership. The first category is full membership for those who are 18 years and above and would like to participate into the church activities and also would like to become more responsible for the businesses of the church. The second category is associate member. These are people who belonged to another assembly or they belong to another church. But when they came to Nairobi, they decided Sitam Buruburu will be their church to attend. We give associate member for such people like those. If you're 18 years and above, you're qualified to become an associate member. The third category is junior membership. This is for the people or for the children who are 12 years to 18 years. And uh, this is also a time for them to participate into the business of the church. Are you baptized and become by part immersion? of the bigger family if not, of God. the next baptism class will be held on the 31st of March, you 2024 get to enjoy certain at 7 a.m. at the dining hall. This, this will be followed one, by the waters of baptism by immersion such as after the, the first service. Among others, you can also hire our facilities at lower rates as compared to non-members. Number three, the pastoral team is able to conduct dedication, baptism, membership, and funeral services at no cost for you as a member of the church. Uh, number four, uh, you get to benefit from the church relief fund and benevolence as per the policy that governs this policy. Number five, you get to receive visits by pastoral staff and elders as need arises. And lastly, you're eligible for appointment or election into leadership positions within the church. It is really very important to belong to church. And the best way to do that is by becoming a registered member. God bless you. So our Trade Fair 2024 is here with us, uh, bigger and better. The date is 14th of April, the second Sunday of April. We are inviting the small enterprises. We are inviting the corporates to just come here and showcase uh, part of what you do because Sitam Buruburu is known for the big business. Our community, the business community is quite large here at Sitam Buruburu. The costs... Small enterprise, 5,000. You can book medium enterprise, 10,000. Large enterprise, 15,000. The corporates will be paying 20,000 to showcase what you have with us. Just sign up at the Huduma Desk with our CBF community team and we'll be able to enlist you even for the great day. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you and I'm 
looking forward to seeing you on the 14th of April. My name is Mark Kabale from Sitam Valley Road. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Grace Nyambu from YP Sitam Ati River. Faith from Sitam Thickard. Where I'm Esther Mboro from Sitam Nyeri. My name is Saibon Longo from Sitam Rivasha. I'm John Weyama, young profession from Sitam Rongai. Bonfis Muthomi from Sitam Mombasa. Newton from Sitam Kangundo Road. My name is Brian Joseph from Sitam Thicker Road. My name is Godwin Kilonzo from Sitam Thicker Road. Robert Kuchio from Sitam Mbakasi. Hallelujah! Indeed, the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24, before they call, I will answer. What a joy to just join in as young professionals and call on the name of the Lord. Indeed, there's a God who answers prayers. If words are powerful, have you tried prayer? Which is why this Young Professionals Prayer Retreat is so exciting. And I welcome every young person to this year's Joint Sitam Young Professionals Prayer and Fasting Retreat, taking place from 28th March to 30th March 2024 at Heaven's Gate Prayer Mountain. Come as you take on new territories on your knees. See you there. Special greetings to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a great joy and privilege it is for us to be alive today and to see the kind of things that we are seeing. Indeed, we live in moments that God is at work, both in our lives as individuals, but also in Sitam wide as a ministry. We've seen his favor as we've initiated uh, uh, new congregations. Uh, and the way those congregations have grown in numbers, uh, at the same time, our older congregations are getting established and uh, we are seeing the Lord intervening as the numbers also grow among the older congregations. Uh, this is a, a sign that God is with us and more and more we are moving towards each county as slowly by slowly the Lord gives us the opportunity to begin taking new territories in county headquarters. And more recently we have begun reflecting again on what the Lord started to do a few years ago. We had embarked on a project that we called Moving the Ark, which was an initiative to establish a our assemblies, at least five of them in uh, sanctuaries and buildings. We were able to do two, Sitam Gong and Sitam Parklands, but then uh, we were not able to continue. And currently we are in a state where we want to move 23 of our assemblies into more permanent buildings, and we feel it is doable. During my membership in this place, the number of people have witnessed the number of people increasing to attend both first and second services in this uh, church. As a result of which, you find that uh, this created a challenge of parking facilities. We do not have any more space left in the tents. Congregants are following services from outside the tents and online and it's very hot. I cannot wait for the new sanctuary where there will be more space for everybody. We are squeezed in our current premises. With the bigger premises, we'll be able to reach more people and even accommodate more people. We are looking forward to a time when we can permanently own this facility and as soon as possible, so that we can now put up permanent structures and plan adequately for the growth of the church. The church was launched on the 9th of June in the year 2019. We are, from then until now, hosted at the Green Garden School in Kikuyu Town. Uh, the space that we are in initially was quite sufficient, but at the moment I would say we are quite uh, constrained. Uh, the numbers have risen, and I would bet where the numbers, the church would have grown much more numerically if we had our own space that is sufficient and a bit expanded. 
CITAM has about uh, 60,000 members. And if we only had 25,000 members of CITAM making a commitment uh, that each of them was going to give 50,000 shillings per year within a short period of time. As a matter of fact, if we give 50,000 per year and another 50,000 per year, in two years' time, 25,000 people actively participating, we actually would be able to raise 2.5 billion shillings. And if we are able to raise 2.5 billion shillings, we can establish all our uh, 23 assemblies, uh, both in their permanent sanctuaries, uh, but also those that do need land, we will have both land to settle them. And so we want to invite you to participate with us in this initiative that we are calling Together in Generosity, that you as an individual would generously make a commitment to pledge a certain amount of money that you'll give in 2024 and another amount that you'll give in 2025. And we believe within a two years' time, we will be able to raise 2.5 billion that we can actually use to establish all our assemblies. So do please join us. Paul the Apostle wrote and said, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And may God bless you as you take step to make this commitment a reality in your life. Thank you very much. Fill the pledge form. Give via m -Pesa, check, money transfer, and cash through designated envelope. You can also give in kind. Together. 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 In generosity. In generosity. In generosity. Together in generosity. We kindly appeal to the congregation to donate maize flour, wheat flour, you dry food stuff, power, grains, the Holy Spirit cooking oil, rice, you, sugar, so for and this salt reason, to feed the needy you among us. You can drop your gift at the office during the week the gift of or God, on Sunday at the Mass Basket drop-off God has not given Your kind contribution will go a long way love, to feed a family. Sound mind and of power. We are pleased to announce the first part of marriage between Jivan Eshi Ulamanigo and Stephanie Nasenia Kwabi to be held on the April 2024 at Sita Buruburu from 11 a.m. Should there be anyone with a just cause like why these two should not be wedded in holy matrimony, please present it to the senior pastor before the wedding day or forever hold your peace. So that's it from the media desk. Special thanks to my director, Larry, and the entire media team. Remember, it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Have a blessed Sunday and a great week ahead. Amen. Let us appreciate media team. Uh, today, I think uh, you have seen beautiful tents around because we are calling it... Uh, ministry fair and i believe god god called us and if you ask jesus because jesus is the answer uh, he sends us all of us that he didn't call us just to be coming to church and going back so he called us to serve and give us different abilities talents and gifts to serve in different ministries so in this ministry fair as you go around after service you will see different ministries like children ministry, women ministry. If you are not in one, kindly join one. Because the Lord is waiting. And the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord is moving. You know, ranging around. Strengthening those whose heart are committed to him. Amen. So are you committed to the Lord? Do you have a passion for certain ministry? Today is your day. Just go around and see for yourself. So, um, and then I also read Bands of Marriage. Uh, we are pleased to announce the first Bands of Marriage between Given Ishuala 
Anungo and Stephanie Nasenya Kwavi to be held to be held on 13th April 2024 at Sitamburuburu from 11 a.m. Should there be anyone with a just cause why these two should not be wedded in a holy matrimony, please present it to the senior pastor before the wedding date or forever. Hold your peace. It's time to give. Yes. Uh, we thank you for faithful giving, and uh, I want to invite the worship team as they come, and also request the media team to play the giving clips. After this, I will not come back. Our senior will come and bring us the word for the day. Let us appreciate our senior pastor. We can do better than that, Sita Muruburu. Amen. Giving clip, please. Here at Sitamburuburu, we have different ways of giving. You may simply drop your offering in the offering baskets. You may pay via our M-Pesa payable number 933945 and the account name is Tithe Offering or Thanksgiving. You may also swipe your master or visa card on our PDQ machines at the main exits or by reaching out to our ushers dressed in red jackets. And last but not least, you can draw a check in favor of Christ's Answer Ministries and in Indicate Buruburu at the back of the check. Giving is part and parcel of our worship experience. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you again, Lord. You are the giver of life and you have given us your own son to come and die for us so that we may live a holy life, not because of our strength, but because of the grace that he has granted us, Lord. We pray that Lord God Almighty, as we give to you according to your word and what you have given unto us, Lord. Jehovah, there is nothing that we can pay Jehovah God to give or to repay you for what you have given unto us. You are so great and you are so mighty. And we pray that Lord God Almighty that your strength, Lord Almighty, be given to every giver. And I pray for favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Almighty, as they serve you, in that position, O oh Lord Almighty, we thank you for the ability and the skill to make wealth, O oh Lord. We are grateful for the job opportunities that you have granted unto us, O oh Lord. We pray that even as we continue to worship you with part of what you have given unto us, may you receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Jehovah God, that those who may not have material things to give this morning, and they have given themselves to you, Lord. Would you remember them in the name of Jesus? Your word says, test me in this, Lord Almighty. And it is you who give us what to give. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, as they go for those interviews, as they seek those job opportunities, as they trust you for that promotion, in the mighty name of Jesus, would you remember them, Lord Almighty? Bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. And even we pray, Jehovah God, for the resources that we are giving. Jehovah God, we pray for wisdom for the deacon boards. That Jehovah God, these resources will be used in furtherance of your kingdom. We bless you and we honor you. Thank you for the word of the day, Lord. The speaker of the word, we pray, Jehovah God. We pray for our senior pastor in the name of Jesus. That you grant him, Lord Almighty, accuracy. And Lord Almighty, I pray that you will speak to him through him in the name of Jesus. For Jehovah God, we know that you use us. And when you gather us, Lord, you don't gather up your people in vain. May that word come so powerfully. Rebuke us, correct us, and encourage us, O oh Lord. Jehovah God Almighty, have your way.
you father god because indeed we hear the sound of victory and sit down this morning we are victory in the lord god who is alive forever hallelujah i said we do have the victory church of christ that is here this morning we were not born to lose a battle sit down we are the victory of the lord god we declare this service is covered by the blood of the lamb we the, we address all the kingdom of the enemy declare every chain of the devil is broken every warfare is defeated in the name of the lord we raise the ban of the lord in this place and the worship him is alive jesus christ our savior who never lost in a battle our god in heaven give him a shout of praise this morning if you are a winner give him a shout of praise everybody hallelujah to the lamb of god and so we give you honor and praise for all this we ask in Jesus' name. And say, Taburu Buru, say a big amen. Why don't you love them with a clap of ring, Tabadani? Thank you so much. The Lord bless you greatly. Amen, and amen, and amen. I declare the devil is a loser. I don't know if I people say amen. I say the devil is a loser. It is a week of victory when Jesus went all the way. And in time for us, and we want to declare that he did, we are more than conquerors in God. Do have a witness in the house of God. We are more than conquerors in the Lord. So the enemy will never win the battle. The Lord is on the winning side. Satan Buruburu, good morning today. Uh, Pastor Dominic, please come for a second. I want people to admire for a second before I start preaching this morning. Uh, one is the man is well dressed this morning. I just wanted to look at this so that I arrived this morning from Italy, please. I wanted to. Do you love our pastor, please? Is this man this morning? I did ask you, is this man? Now, now you can see how people love you, Pastor C. And, and this month, this year, 2024, you know, I want to let you know that by the grace of God, the Lord is a miracle working God. Do have a witness in the house of God? He's still working out to miracles. Do you know what? This year we have been saying, taking new territories. That is our theme this year. Amen. Now, God has given this man three mountains this year. He has blessed him with three good things, three miracles. The first one is actually by the grace of God. He did interviews the other day and he qualified pastoral interviews. And I want to thank God for him because now he's relocating to Sitam Kili City as a pastor for a few months as a student pastor. But he will just get into pastoral team just in the next few months. The second one, he is doing his master's program in Africa International University in the Olonje. And so he also be graduating this year as well with his master's. You think God is good. And the best one now, I think you know this now, is the Lord is giving him a wonderful wife. <laughs> And so, what you need to do is, I know a number of you are saying, Pastor, you have been a blessing to me, isn't it? 
the man has been a blessing to us. Would you want to be a blessing to this man? The wedding going to be on 20th of April, all the way in Masabit. And so even if you're not traveling, a couple of people are traveling to Masabit. And we want to thank God for that. If you want to be a blessing to him, you can always you want to say, I won't buy a crate of soda, Pastor. You have been a blessing to me. We want you to see Eonda Evanski Konyo is here. You can look at the people Eonda. For those of you who don't know, Eonda Konyo is there. On behalf of the pastor, please. God bless you. You may be blessed by the Lord. Let's appreciate the pastor. Amen. And the Lord will bless you greatly. Let's be a blessing to the man of God. This morning. Let me read this notice quickly and then I'll be able to get to the word of God this morning. At uh, the second time, the notice of the Southern Region Annual General Meeting. Notice is here given that the Southern Region Annual General Meeting, ARA AGM, for Christ Science Ministries will be on on Saturday, 6th April 2024, starting 9 in the morning. The meeting shall be a hybrid meeting with members attending either in, pre, in person, in Sitam Gong, I repeat again, Sitam Gong, uh, or virtually through a Zoom link, uh, which shall be provided and circulated as the clip read a few minutes ago. The agenda going to be prayer and devotion, reading of the notice, convening the meeting, welcome and introductions, confirmation of the minister of the Southern LA, GML 25, March 2023, Matters arising for the minutes of the March 25, 2023, RNGM. Presentation of the region of ACS report and its adoption. Presentation of the cha cha uh, chairman's, uh, re chairman's report. Presentation of the financial account of the church for the year ended 31st, December 2023. Notification of the proposed deacon board members. Notification of the proposed elders. Number 11. Ratification of the delegate to the NDC elected in the southern region eligible in the assemblies. And the last one going to be EOB that should be sent seven days before the RNGM. And all the EOB should be sent to uh, admin at sitam.org. Admin at sitam.org. And so the clip indicated that all registered members are invited. I think it was listed in the clip. And you can follow the rest and the Lord will bless you. But for the financial accounts, they are actually available for Peruso. Uh, and this will be provided to you in due time. And again, this is from the church secretary, our brother Deacon Martin Munyu, who is actually in Kisumu because we had this, the Western uh, RIGM yesterday in Sitam Kisumu. And then ours will be coming on 6th. Uh, just a couple of us other items before I come to the word. Uh, we apologize the mix up on the media. This always does a wonderful job every time, but always sometimes you can have you know a challenge in there. So please don't feel bad for the media for the mix up. Uh, a bit of clarification of what they did, which you could not hear. We'll be having a youth month in the month of April. We have invited all our young people in this community and in this land. We'll be having an entire month trusting God to revive and to bless our young people. So there will be a youth month in April that the clip you did not get very well. And then that first will be baptizing people. And so in case you are here, you don't be baptized, kindly put your name at the Uduman desk as well. And the Lord will greatly bless you, my brothers and sisters. I think for the Friday, nine in the morning, good Friday. Uh, tell your neighbor, good Friday, good Friday. So we're going to just be only for two hours, and we cannot please miss the Good Friday. These are the rules of Christianity. Come, let's remind ourselves, you know, issues to do with the Christianity, and we believe that Lord is going to minister to us powerfully at this coming Friday, nine in the morning, and before you continue to enjoy the rest of your Good Friday holiday, and the Lord uh, will bless you greatly. Uh, keep us in prayer. Five of us will be stepping off the country tomorrow. Uh, for two weeks mission uh, in two nations as we take over the new territories in new lands uh, in this world today. And so kindly keep uh, me in prayer and be leading this team. And uh, we pray that the Lord is going to see us through uh, right from tomorrow all the way to April 8th. And so please keep us in prayer. I might not be able to mention the two nations uh, for reasons really known to me and to other people. But just pray please. Uh, for those nations. Um, just also to indicate that as all of you are aware, we are in a time of transition. 
And we want to let you know that as our pastor, the three of them, Pastor Dominic, Pastor Brenda, and our senior, uh, 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 deputy senior pastor, Pastor Purity, will be giving us just a moment to bless them as they will be leaving us uh, soon. And so we, I, I believe in blessing the servants of the Lord. I believe in appreciation uh, of the saints of God who have served among us. And so we've been giving an opportunity on the 14th of April. Uh, it will be our farewell Sunday for the three of them. And we want to ask you kindly to pray for them and just to bless them as, you, as we, we just usher them to the new stations uh, in the name of the Lord. So that is just to prepare you for the same. Um, I think the last one is what came out from the mouth of our presiding bishop, Calisto Odede. Uh, maybe to clarify whatever was not clear. Uh, for me, the clip was very clear about what is happening. We are trusting the Lord in a big way uh, in our assemblies at the moment to raise uh, money to help the 23 assemblies. That some are, many of them are intense. Others are in the very least lad, uh, so they need a lot of intervention. And so we want to welcome more of you as a family of Buru Buru to participate in this. I think if you missed anything else of what Bishop Kalisto said this morning, is to remember that people have given to ensure that our sanctuary that is coming up just down here, uh, you know, is coming up well. It's not only our money that we contribute right here. Uh, we might not be able to raise all the money putting out the building. This building is 200 million shillings that is coming up, but people are supporting us. And so what we are doing is let's help other people as well uh, also to have the sanctuary like this one of ours that is coming up and even to have pieces of land like this one of ours uh, for those who are in least land. And so what we do today is to ask you as families just to pick up the idea to go and pray as a family and say we want to be a blessing to other people who are also intense and who do not have blood, the 20 the assemblies. And as a family, we are going to give this portion of money in the year 2024 and also this portion of money in the year 2025. So we are raising this money in two years to 25 billion shillings. And let me tell you, it's doable, saints of God. Let's do our best to ensure that we do this, I'm a witness, because when you are doing the campaign of moving the ark, that time I was actually in Sitam uh, Parklands, and we were able to raise almost 350 million shillings that put up Sitam Parklands, and in Gong, I speak to almost half a billion shillings. And we were raising actually one billion that time. So it's doable. It's a matter of just going to pray, sacrifice for the sake of those who need their sanctuaries and Lord. And I believe, Sita ministry members, you don't need to be told a lot of things about giving. You already give us. The Lord has just given you just the gift of giving. And may the Lord help you out in Jesus' name, even as you pray about it. And next Sunday, we'll be giving more information on how to give. And there'll be a task force in the assembly level to spare this wonderful campaign. And we'll be giving information as we go along. So for today... Just digest that information. But tell your neighbor, it is doable. I know I did not have so many people. Tell the other one who believe in giving, it is going to give. And the Lord bless you greatly this morning. Father God, we thank you very much this morning. We ask in a very special way, Father, that even as we, we get to uh, make up our minds on giving to us, the Together in Generosity campaign, that, Lord, you are going to open your door for unity in this. And we ask that the money that you are giving, Lord, indeed, you are the provider, Father. Because silver and gold belong to you, and that all that we have belongs to you, O oh God. We thank you for Sitam Buruburu and the entire Sitam fa family. That, Lord, as we get into this wonderful initiative, you are going to guide us through, and you are going to provide because you have always provided before. Bless us this morning as we dive in into your word. Thou being glorified and exultant, for this we ask in Jesus' name. Every child of God said a big amen. amen. I come to you this morning, brothers and sisters. I do have like about 40 minutes to talk to you briefly before we get down to the ministry fair. A wonderful, wonderful program we have today. And I want to share with you in the word of God, uh, all the way on this subject I'm calling 
in his vineyard. And the media people are going to be helping me on this so that I can make it quick for you to pick it. I'm talking on the subject in his vineyard. And I'm connecting all this of what we are doing today in our ministry fair. A big reminder to all of us as we serve the Lord God Almighty in Sita Ministries is a big reminder that you are fashioned to serve God. You are fashioned to give to God. You are fashioned to live in this world, not just to waste time, but God knew why he brought you here. And so this is more of a reminder to all of us in terms of the service of God, speaking on the theme, in his vineyard uh, today. A couple of scriptures, maybe which you can be able to pick for yourself later on. Uh, if you get to Matthew 25, 14, you would actually find this subject I'm addressing today. Because Matthew 25, 14, it gives you the story of the talent. The people were given talents, one, five. The other one was given two. And the other one was given a one. And you can actually be able to find this someone today there. But I don't want to speak about Matthew 25, 14. But I'm showing you some of the episode of the Bible. We actually will get the same subject I'm addressing today. But also if you jump to John 13, also one. You will also be able to see Jesus himself illustrated why we should serve him. He was teaching the disciples that I'm about to leave you guys. And he wants you to know you need to extend the ministry of service. And so he taught about servant leadership on how to lead and on to serve people. Also another text I would have picked if I wanted to is John 15. Again says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Meaning that each one of us will be put to be fruitful and to bear fruit by serving the Almighty God. So I would have also picked John 15 and I would have also taught you how to serve God through that scripture. Also, I would have picked also First Peter number 4 and the verse 10 going onwards that says each one of us has been given a particular gift that we need to exercise in the body of Christ knowing that the Lord gave birth to a local assembly for a purpose of serving him because he's not here anymore. He gave us the mandate to serve the other people and to serve the humanity. So I'm coming this morning to remind you as a congregation that gathers in Sitan Buruburu, the 5,000 of us plus, that he did, by the grace of God, there are people who have labored in the last 18 years from the founding of this assembly and they serve God in various, uh, you know, areas of their lives. But my focus is Romans 12 and verse 1. That's what we're going to share a little bit this morning before we break this service for home. Romans number 12. The Bible says from verse 1, uh, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform, number two, to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. Is good and pleasing and a perfect will. Number three, the Bible says, For by the grace given, I say to you, every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather think of yourself with a sober judgment in accordance with the faith in God as distributed uh, to all of you. Verse 4, the Bible says, For just as each one of us has one body with many members, these members do not have all the same one function. So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belong to all the others. Verse 6, the Bible says, We have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us. If your gift is to prophesy, then you prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then do it very generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show, to show mercy, do it cheerfully. 
Father God, again, flow with your anointing this service and minister to us this wonderful word. Our hearts are open, Father, for the ministry of your one this morning. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen this morning again. My brothers and sisters, this morning, a big reminder we were created to worship God. The fact you are alive today is because your business on earth is not over, yet over. The reason you have a particular gift, talent, is for a particular purpose. It's not just for you to carry it along and know that it's inside you, but to realize it's for the very purpose. Why God give you that? In Sita Ministries, we do have categories of ministry, and I want to take about like three minutes to bring you just on board when you talk about serving God, I do not want to assume that all of us know what we need to do in Sita Buru Buru and also in Sita Ministries. We have three categories of ministry. The first one is what we call nature ministry. Nature ministry is where we take some time for you to, to nurture people, to grow people, to teach people, to, to, to encourage people. That's what we call nature, to grow them in the ways of God, to grow them spiritually. That is category number one. Category number two, this ministry cut across not only Sitamburu Buru, but in the next, in uh, all the assemblies we have. We have actually about 31 assemblies at the moment in, in, in the country and the four out of the country. The second one is the service. People who normally give service, especially on Sundays, I'm, I'm going to be showing you all this. Service people take over and say, we want to serve people. Not, not because we want any payment, but we want to serve God. We, we want to serve God in that particular department God has given you. But also we do have category number three, the fellowship ministries. These are ministries where people are to meet. They are, we actually call it a family, a, a, a family, a, a affinity groups. We have people meet of various kinds of people in terms of age, sometimes not age. And they meet to fellowship, to encourage each other. You know, to start each other on this journey of faith. So we call them fellowship ministry. And let me just go ahead and just list them a little bit for you to see where we are. Nature ministry. We have children in ministry. We have teens and youth. We have prayer. We have discipleship. We have new believers, safari groups. We have also the school of ministry, which you call a school of ministry and leadership development. We have counseling. We have missions which stands both in the, actually the nature and also in the service. Because missions means we are bringing people to God, nurturing them to walk in the ways of the Lord. But also we serve people out there in the marketplace. But also face where we mentor couples, both young and old, just to grow in the ways of the Lord in marriages. What about fellowship? Those people normally meet them to fellowship together. Yeah, you know, as people, we have young professionals. Singles ministry, young professionals, mostly we pick 25 to that four, both men and women. Singles ministry, the same 35 and above men and women. All these ministries need us to serve. Women ministry, men ministry, single, single parents who are among us. For us, we believe everybody counts in sit ministry. We'll never throw anyone out. They have to enjoy our fellowship among us. Golden age ministry, the only ministry you qualify by the age that if you're 50 years and above, the challenges, we love them. We fellowship with them and they fellowship among themselves. Jewels, as we call them in this assembly, and of course, the windows as well. But what are the service ministry where a number of us want to serve uh, every Sunday? These are ministries that normally happens every Sunday. And if some of us need to realize you might not pick so many, ministry, mini, uh, so many service ministries because you cannot be in the choir and at the same time being an usher, or being an usher, and at the same time being in the media. So these are ministries where you pick maybe one or two uh, that fits you. Ushering ministry, welcome ministry, music ministry, media ministry, creative garage, I'm told, the drama, protocol and hospitality, serving people, entertaining the people, beautification, to ensure that at least we have beauty in the church, social action and advocacy, serving God, in the marketplace, helping those who are in India among a visitation in the hospitals. CMBF, this one can actually be a service and also a nurture uh, and also a fellowship because businessmen and the women can also meet and just to fellowship together and to encourage each other 
you know, in the world of business, Holy Communion serving you, traffic ministry, right now they are with your cars out there, that's why you are comfortable, security, ensuring you are fine. And then prisons ministry, which we just launched just the other day. And the word is not written uh, right in, your, in the screen. It's also what we call administration, administration and also governance. There's another beautiful, beautiful department in the service. These are people like the members of staff in the church, especially the admin, the secret, secretaries who serve in the house of God. Uh, the, all of them belong there, advisory members. They all belong in the demean and in the governance docket. So, so, so those are some of the things that though, let me just mention as we talk about in his vineyard today. So that you don't miss out to realize where you belong. Because today, the voice and the weed, how can we serve the Lord? Because with the few hands we have around, a few pastors among us, the members of the advisory, the few elders we have, and the few ones we have HODs, we cannot be able to serve this multitude of people that normally gather here every Sunday, 5,000 and plus. And so this morning, I dive in in this word just to encourage you from Romans number 12 as we get to learn. Five conditions of a servant of God. Let's go together in this. What are some of the things we look at Whenever we talk about being in the vineyard of God or in the service of God, and they do have five items I wanted to share as per Romans number 12 this morning. What are those conditions that you say, yes, Lord, help me out, ready to serve you, ready to sacrifice, ready to get dedicated to your work, because all that I am is about you, all that I have is about you, the car I drive, the house I have, the job I have. It's all about you, Lord. What are some of the things we look for? The first that I see is embracing holiness and the eating scene as a ministry worker. That is number one. Embracing holiness by eating scene as a servant of God, as a ministry worker. And if Paul talked to their church in Romans number 12 and verse 1, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the masses of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your special act of worship. And he says, do not conform to the word or to the pattern of the word, but have your minds be renewed by God so that you can be able to discern the will of God in your life. The first thing I see as a servant of God and to realize God is holy and he said, those of you who are called in my kingdom must be as well be holy. And so the first item I see, if you have to give yourself to the service of God, you have to embrace the holiness of God. Because you cannot mix it up. You have to be holy as God is holy. So are you going to serve in the worship team? Are you going to say, yes, I want to be a Sunday school teacher. I want to be a youth worker. The hallmark is holiness. You have to embrace the holiness of God. Are you to lead that department? We cannot mix it up. And why people run away, by the way, from the ministry, Sitam Buruburu, is because of the mix they see and the things they see among the ministry workers. Sometimes we fight. Sometimes we talk rudely to each other. Sometimes they don't see how, whether we're enjoying the work we are doing. And because sometimes sin come among us, they don't admire at all the service of God. And so they say, I don't want to serve the young God. But the qualification I see here, Paul says, I appeal to you, brothers, first and foremost, God is interested with you before anything else. In fact, let me say, God is interested with you more than the work you do. So it's so much of being than actually doing. It's so much of your heart, not the deeds you do as a servant of God. And so this beautiful morning, you would just declare as a person, Lord, help me. In the case you are serving God and Still, you are indulging sin. You sing in the choir. I'm not talking about our worship team this morning. But tomorrow, Monday, is a different thing altogether when you meet them in the offices. You are an elder today, or maybe you're a pastor today. But tomorrow, things change. Holiness is what characterizes the servant of God in his vineyard. And the Lord is always impressed, brothers and sisters, because when we serve God in holiness, by all means, even without speaking, 
People will come to the Lord. People will get to love God. People, in fact, will say, I want to love that God or that person because God is holy. And so, number one, for you to serve God, embrace holiness in your life. And so, are you sitting here this morning and maybe you're struggling as a ministry worker or maybe even as a believer coming to worship God because also you belong to God. Ask the Lord to shut up every sin in your life and embrace the holiness of God in your life. And say, Lord, as long as I serve you, I'll trust you, Father, to live a holy life in my life. And the Lord is normally pleased by the sacrifice we do. In fact, he says, a contrite heart I will never despise. Because every moment we serve him, our sacrifice that we offer to God, they shouldn't be like perfume or fragrance in the nostrils of God. So that as you see all that God can see and he can smell in that fragrance, the perfume, because you are serving him with all your heart and you are excited, you are happy and you are born again and your lives are straight. And so Paul says, give yourself first to God before actually you serve him. So that is number one that I see. The second element of a servant of a ministry worker, because I'm addressing the subject in his vineyard as we serve him, is embracing humility and eating pride. Embracing humility by saying no to pride in your life. If you look at verse 3, we are within this morning. The Bible says, For the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned you. And in fact, verse 16 says, live in harmony. I did not read the entire scripture. You can read actually up to 21. So I'll be just pitching, uh, picking a few verses here and there. But the entire verse is Romans 12, 1 to 21. So I'll be picking up a, quite a, couple, a couple of versions as we go along. Verse 16 says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty or proud, but, but associate yourself with the lowly or the people are low. Do not claim to be wiser than actually you are. Have you met people who have said, unless I'm in the choir, that thing cannot work. Unless I'm an usher, you know, and I'm an usher that thing cannot work. Have you met people say that, unless I'm working for that church, that thing going to fall down. Have you met those people? You say, it is because of me. You know, unless I am, you know, unless I do it for this guy, they don't know how to do it. Let me tell you, somebody says, it's our only statement that pride comes. Before our fall. In fact, the Bible says, God resists the proud people. What that didn't do to the humble people, He gave them a lot of grace. So I pray that even as we serve the Lord, don't think that you are one of the best. In fact, what I normally say is by the grace of God, He has given you talent to serve Him. And in fact, let me say, it is an honor to serve the living God. It is an honor. We don't deserve it at all. In fact, let me say this. He has given you those two hands and the two legs. Haven't you seen people who are blind, they serve God. People with no hand, they serve God. People who have no leg, they are serving the Lord. They are across the board. But thank God you have everything you have. You can be able to speak by the grace of God. You can be able to see people as you preach to them. You can be able to walk all the way by the grace of God. Not because of who you are, not because of that degree from all your university. Brothers and sisters, it's all by the grace of God he has called you to serve him. So serve him with humility. Don't be proud because the Lord may throw you out because of your pride. All that you have belonged to God, even to a man to go to school, is all by the grace of God. Even to have that degree, is all by the grace of God. Am I right, Sita Muruburu, this morning? Do I have somebody who believes God's one this morning? In his vineyard, saints of God, let's serve God. Let's put pride down and say, Lord, I'm serving you because you are good. Don't you know there are people who serve God and that they have no legs? And in fact, they are driven with, the, with wheelchairs to the crusade to serve God. But see what the Lord has done over your life. Put pride down. In fact, he says, never think of yourself highly than you ought to be. And in fact, he says, live in harmony with one another. Because you need, brothers and sisters, you proud people will never work with others. Even the committees, I don't know, I don't want to ask you, but do you have some people in your committees who know everything? Every idea that comes up in your committee, they, they say, I know about that. You try to tell them something, they say, 
chair, you know, uh, actually I'm, I know what you're about to say. Have you met this kind of people? <laughs> well, sometimes it's because you are gifted differently and because of our maybe personal traits or temperaments. But some people are so proud. Now, the thing is this. I, I pray that the Lord may help you because now pride doesn't go with the service of God. We bring God just to have mercy upon you because you need to drop your pride. And say, Lord, I want to serve you because all that we have belong to him. So don't think yourself that I'm the best. Unless I play the keyboard, those guys cannot enjoy. You, you know, unless I project for that guy, he will struggle a lot with that PowerPoint. You know, never be proud. Say, I am who I am because of God. And use your talent and go home and say, Lord, I served you. Even when people pat you on the back and say, yeah, you are the best musician. Say, it's for the glory of God. You are the best preacher. Say, it's for the glory of God. You are the best ash in the church. Say, it's for the glory of God. And always you say, I don't deserve it. It is all about the Lord. So, in this vineyard, that the second thing I see of any ministry worker, that the Lord will help us in this, in the name of the Lord. The third one, embrace unity of purpose and say no to the divisions. Embrace the unity of purpose and say no to the divisions. Look at verse 4. The Bible says in 12 where we read this morning, for us in one body, we have many members. And not all the members have the same function. Sitam buru Mm. So we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually we are members of one another. We, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. That means each one of us we have different gifts. And it says, instead of fighting, those of you that are prophesying, go on doing it by faith. Those of you that are doing ministry, please continue doing the ministration. Those of you who are gifted to be teachers of the word, continue teaching. Those of you who are exhorters, continue with the exhortation. This is King James Version. Those of you who are givers, give in generosity, together in generosity. Bishop Callisto says this morning for sister ministry, give in generosity. If you are a leader, give it diligently. If you are a compassionate, do it cheerfully. In other words, there is no competition in the kingdom of God, sit and buru buru. I say there is no competition. By the grace of God, we complement each other. And at this point, tell your neighbor, I love you with the love of God. Tell, come on, tell that you believe it. The other one who has some good attitude wants to say, it's good, it's good to be seated next to you this morning in the church. Don't you worry. I know some of you are so shy. You are still looking at me. I'm not your neighbor, but it's okay. I, it is okay. I know, honestly speaking, I know people are really very shy. But I normally say, even if you are shy, you still go to heaven as long as you are born again. Amen? So I'm just encouraging those of you who cannot look at each other. Yesterday on the baby, uh, Pastor Baby was telling us, man, they, they don't look each other face to face. So he, you, you know where you are looking at each other face to face. I know sometimes we can be very shy. But, uh, but we thank God that Pastor Dominic, you gather all your strength, man, and because proposing is very hard. You know, proposing is one of the difficult things for a young man when you're seeing a girl somewhere. And I did this one also in KU when I was a boy, and, and the girl is in the house who saw me and loved me. And he's 23 years down the line, in a way. Let me see the rest of the things here. But the point is this sometimes it's so shy, and, and for Pastor Dominic to gather all the strength to look at this girl, and they say, I say, she is called. Julo? Did I forget the name? Jilo. Yeah, she's called Jilo. You see, I know the name of the girlfriend, the fiancé now. That Jilo, I, I love you. Would you want to marry me? <laughs> and Evans, I need to know what you told your wife, but <laughs> it is not easy. But brothers and sisters, do you know what? We are one in the kingdom of God. We should be, we should embrace unity and say, we are one in the body of Christ. By the way, let me tell you, when you see people coming together and say, Satan, buru buru, we are one army. We will never allow the devil to bring us divisions. So if somebody arises and says, you people, where are you going? We say, we are one family. We are one army. We complement each other. Even when things are not working out, like this morning, something went around with the media people. Don't throw stone to them. Say, we love you. We know you have always done it very good. But this morning, maybe there was a niche somewhere. That's how people work together. 
We don't destroy each other. We build each other. Can I hear an amen in the house of God? Because I need you. You need me. Whether you are going to school or not, you need me. I need you. If you are tall or short, I still love you. If you are dark like me, you are light skin. I mean, we are called in one kingdom of God. It doesn't matter where you come from. Whether you are a Lu, a Luya, Kamba, Meru, whatever it is. You are my brother in the Lord. I need you in the ministry. I need you to put out this ministry to great height in Jesus' name. Somebody say a big amen. So embrace the unit of purpose. Don't hate the people. Don't divide the church of Christ. And if I let me say, I have never said this before here. But if the devil may have entered to you to bring us division and disunity in the house of God. Let me talk to you as a, a team leader by the grace of God. You are not fighting the advisory. You are not fighting the pastoral team. You are not fighting the HODs. You are actually fighting God Almighty. And nobody has ever fought God and win the battle. Am I right? If anything, you may attract curses and rebellion. And you may just attract curses and the bless and, 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 and the problems of your life. And sometimes we mark time. We wonder why things are not working out for us. Sometimes we attract any curses. Because who spoke and said our elders are not like elders from Satan Valerot. Or maybe I wish we are Deacon Lewis like this. Or we are this HOD like this. I pray may we be together in the name of the Lord. Why don't you do this sign of unity and just touch your neighbor hand and say, we are together in the Lord this morning. Come on somebody all over the building. We are together. Tell them we are together. We are together. We are together. That our God has us. And in that way, brothers and sisters, then we won't be able to, to do the work God has given us as one team. Because you are going to do what I'm not ready to do. I am totally different from Pastor Purit. I'm totally different from Pastor Jacobson or from others. We are gifted differently. But I normally say there is unity in diversity. So we bring all these gifts together. What I don't have, I give someone else to do it. The body of Christ get built together. And that's why the Bible says that in dim brothers and sisters, we bring our gift together for the growth of the body of Jesus Christ. So together... As a team in Jesus' name. The fourth one, as I come uh, towards the end of this sharing this morning, I am talking about in his vineyard, the vineyard of the Lord, the sham of the Lord, the garden of the Lord, the church of Jesus, the ministry. That's what I'm talking about. How can we, in a special way, serve the Lord with all that he has given us in his house? Number four, another condition of a servant of God or a ministry worker. Embrace the grace to serve your enemies. That one is a difficult one, but I'm going to still talk about it. Embrace the grace to serve your enemies. It went down to what I read this morning, Romans number 12 and the 14. <laughs> and I know this is not easy. It says, bless those who persecute you. How many of you do that? The guy who is about you, who want to kill you, who won't want to see you. The guys who are police a case in the court, who want to destroy your life completely. The guy who doesn't want to see you in your neighborhood, who has done all this. But the Bible says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not cast them. That's God's word. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haunted or proud. Associate yourself with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. That verse was captured earlier on. And number 17 says, Do not repay one evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. <laughs> for if it is possible, look at this. For if it is possible so far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. Beloved, Never avenge for yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. Why? For it is written, vengeance belongs to who? To God. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are angry, look at that. Walk with me, saints of God here. And just try to put yourself in the balance and see whether you're there. If your enemies are angry, what do you do to them? 
<laughs> do you do that? Please don't, don't look down, look at me. We, we, are just, we are getting through the scriptures. I'm looking at myself as well on this. If, you know, if your enemy is hungry, do what? Feed them. If they are Thursday, give them something to drink. <laughs> For by doing this, you heap burning coals on their hands. Do not overcome, e do not, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with God. It is a handy one, am I right? I, I had a lot of yes there. <laughs> it's a difficult one. But do you know, brothers and sisters, in the body of Christ, as the Lord has been able to call you into his vineyard, he has called you to be a servant of God. There are people who don't even like your ministry. Have you met people who are saying, what are these ushers doing here? Have you met guys who are saying that this work are meant people who told them to wear uniform in the church? Have you met people who are saying that, I mean, these guys are missing out on how to do Sunday school. Have you met those kind of people? Let me tell you, even your enemies just love them. Because we serve God not because of what we have, it's all because of the gift he has given us. And so he says, even your enemies, feed them, serve them. And right now I want to take a second, not because I want you to run away from the service. But do you have someone that right now, in your mind, you feel like, Pastor, this guy, he just tortured me. I, I, I have no strength at all to forgive this man. Is it a couple? Is it a single parent? Is it a single person? Is it in the marketplace, in the office where you are? And you have pretend a very big grudge. And you're saying, I'll never forgive this man. It may be to lose my job and to be sucked by my boss. Or maybe it is that very boss that has kind of given you all this letter and say you cannot make it. The Bible is taken this morning. We have to embrace the grace of God. Why am I bringing the word grace? It's because sometimes you are not able to forgive, but you need the grace of God to forgive. You need the grace of God to forgive. You, you need the grace of God to say, yes, you did this one to me, but I'll still serve you. I'll still give you some water to drink. I'll still clothe you. This is the word of God, brothers and sisters. As long as we're in the vineyard of the Lord, there are all kinds of people to be served in the vineyard of God. Not only righteous people, not only upright people. There are all kinds of people who will fight. Even right here in Sitamburuburu, I'm sure those of you have been longer. You give me many stories. How ministry has been here. How you have been hurt by someone. How by you feel like you cannot walk with so and so. But can I ask the Lord for the grace this morning. May the Lord give you grace to serve even your enemy. To love even your enemies. And to say I will still love you the way you are. In the vineyard of the Lord. Let's serve everyone. Whether they love us or not. Let's just serve them. In Sitamburuburu. You know Why? It is because I normally say, we are serving the living God. We are not serving Bishop Kalisto Dede. We are not serving Deacon so-and-so, Elder so-and-so, Pastor so-and-so. We are serving the living God. And so say, Lord, give me the grace to serve my enemies in every situation of my life. The last one, as I conclude this, brothers and sisters, this morning. Talking about the conditions of the servants of God. In the vineyard of our father. The ministry workers. All the workers. In the vineyard of our father. The last one is their rewards. In the vineyard. At least I thank God for that. Hebrews number 6. Verse 10 to 11. Hebrews 6, 10 and 11. It indicates to all of us this morning. That God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them or to love them. We want each one of you to show this same diligence to the very end, Satan Boroboro, so that what you hope for may be realized in the coming days. I normally say, our service in the Lord is never in even Sitamburuburu. As you continue to serve the Lord as an elder, as a pastor, as an HOD, as a ministry worker, the Bible says our work in the Lord is never in vain. And I pray this morning, brothers and sisters, 
that the Lord God of heaven who called us to serve him. I want to declare in the name of the Lord this morning to all of us who are hearing me this morning. Who those of you that are serving and those of you are joining us in serving God. May the Lord remember you as you serve him. And I declare you will never go without bread, Satan, Buruburu, as you serve our Father. Can I say that one more time? You'll never go naked as long as you're serving our dear God. Can I say you'll never sleep on the street, on the tree? The Lord will provide a shelter for you. As you continue to serve the Lord this morning, may I prophesy. May the Lord just open some doors. And if I let me stand on your feet, I want to speak to you right now in a minute in this anointing of God. I want to declare in the name of the Lord as we serve God Almighty God. May he remember you, Satan Buruburu. May the Lord remember you. May he cause you to enjoy your good health. Because there is a reward of the servants of God who serve him. In the Dabriel, may the Lord remember you. All your labor, all your sweat, all your time, and all your energies. I may God remember you in the marketplace. May the Lord cause you to blossom in the marketplace. Those of you not working, may the Lord remember you. He is able to remember you, saints of God, this morning. May I declare in the name of the Lord, promotion also come from our God. Can I declare this morning, Sitam Buruburu? As we continue serving our God, promotion doesn't come from the heat or from the now. It comes from the Lord. May the Lord cause you to be promoted. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I believe there are rewards in the vineyard of God. May the Lord cause you to be promoted. May the Lord cause you to work those of you that are jobless. May the Lord cause you to have a baby who trusts in God for children. May the Lord cause you to receive your healing in your body raised morning. Lord, as we serve you, we ask you right now, would you release, come on, close your eyes, everybody, right now, and tell the Lord, I'm going to serve you as long as I'm alive. I will serve you, Lord. Come on, open your mouth, everybody. I believe this morning we are releasing the spirit of service. And the Lord is causing us to serve him. Come on, sit and buru buru, open your mouth and say, Lord, thank you that I'm serving you. Make me holy. I want to serve you, Lord, in holiness. Forgive me, my Father, the moment I've entangled myself in sin. But Lord, I pray. That would cleanse me this morning, Jehovah God. Come on, do I hand right now? Everybody say, Father, cause me to bring unity in the body of Christ. And say in the name of the Lord, I will never bring divisions. Let's break every spirit of disunity among us. As we praise each other, sit and bru let your voices. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you. Come on, let's spend a two minutes here right now. Let's pray. Hallelujah. I want to engage you in two, three minutes in prayer. Hallelujah. Let turn this service in our prayer service. In the mighty name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God. We pray that the Lord you may help us, Lord. Help us to be humble, Jehovah. Take away pride in us, O oh God. Where we felt we, we, we cannot do church without you, Lord. Where we felt the worship they cannot go without us. Oh, Jehovah, forgive us, forgive us from pride, Lord. Where we felt we are, we are something, Lord, when we are nothing. It's all by your grace, oh God. Come on, open your mouth right now. Sit and buru buru. In the name of the Lord, dedicate your life to Jesus. Say, Lord, cleanse me, purify me. In the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell God, give me grace to serve you, Lord. Sometimes it is not easy. But Lord, I'm trusting you to serve you, to serve you, Lord. Oh, my hand, Lord, may the Spirit of the Lord move right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us. Help us, Lamb of God, to serve you. Give us grace, even to love and amaze, O oh God. Help us to forgive even those who have wronged against us, Lord. Help us to forgive. Help us to forgive, Lord. Forgive, to forgive, to forgive. Oh, Jehovah God, release. Because unless we forgive Jehovah, we will never be forgiven. Lord, unless we forgive, you remain bound. But Lord, this morning we release those who have hurt us, O oh God. Even the cause of serving the Lord, those who have hurt us, O oh God. Those who have wounded our hearts in the course of our ministry. We forgive them this morning, Jehovah. And we say we are serving you. Give us grace to love them one more time, O oh God. Oh, Lamb of God. Shela Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Oh, bless the Lord that you are, oh, you have two legs. The Lord has given you two legs to serve him. He has given you two hearts. He has given you ears to hear. He has given you eyes to see. This morning you can say, Lord, help me to serve you. I've just been a pure woman. I'm doing nothing in the church. I normally come. But you are making a commitment this morning. That as long as you are alive, you are going to serve God. You are going to serve the Lord in the Sunday school. You are going to serve the Lord in the teens church. You are going to serve the Lord in the youth church. You are going to serve the Lord in the media, in the worship. Come on, commit your life to God this morning. Those of you who are not walking in from God, who are not in ministries. And say, Lord, as long as I live, oh God, I will serve you. I will serve you. That's why you gave me this degree. That's why you gave me this education. That's why I'm able to speak, Lord. That's why my life, oh God, I'll be in the hospital, oh God. But because of who you are and all that you have given me, I'll serve you. So we thank you, Lord. We give you every praise. We give you every honor. Thou be exalted, Father. Those of you are among us this morning saying, Pastor, I am trusting the Lord to plug in in ministry. Why would one person teach Sunday school from January to December and I'm here? I will work among the young people. Out in the corporate, I'm very good with the youth activities, but in the church, I'm a pure woman. I'm going to help with the youth ministry. Why should the sound people, media people struggle? I am here to help. I have done ICT. I have done this technology. I do want to serve God. I am getting in music. And yet, I see the same people singing every Sunday. I would want to join to serve God in music. I am talented even in playing the equipment out there. But in the church, I don't show up. I have received a challenge to serve God in the vineyard. And I want to pray with a couple of you and say, yes, pastor, somehow. I am preparing myself to serve God. Somebody preached to me, that's why I am born again. But I don't go to do outreach missions to say, yes, I want to give myself to missions to serve God in the outreach. God, give me time. And you say, yes, I want to help. I feel so good when somebody came to visit me in the hospital. But I, I have a pardon to visit the people in the hospital, but I've not done it. I'm just enjoying my comfort zone. But pastor, I don't want to join the visitation ministry. And I cannot mention all of them, but if you have a burden to serve God, let up your hand. I want to pray for you this morning. In the name of the Lord over the building, just lift up your hand. Say, yes, pastor. I want to serve God. I want to trust God. I can see hands all over the building. You say, yes, pastor. I want to serve God. I want to serve God. And I'm going to be letting you know how to do it. For now, it's just an art of obedience. Yes, Lord, I want to serve. Let up your hands. I can see them all over the building. Father, thank you for all these hands lifted up to you this morning. I pray, Lord, for this call to serve you. I ask in Jesus' name that, Lord, you are moving in your power. Touch them, Lord. And cut in the earth, Lord. None of us is competent, but our competence is in the Lord. For you never call on the qualifying Father. You always qualify those that who call. So, Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Oh, sons are up right now. Lord, may you hear them. May you touch them, oh God. And may you direct their ways in Jesus' name. So we give you all the honor and all the praise. Be thou magnified, Lord. And so I want to bless you this morning. Let up your hand, every one of you. Whether you are serving the Lord or not, Father God, I ask you. Oh, these people, you are this morning, this assembly. Those who are serving and those who are not serving, oh God. We pray this morning that, Lord, you remember each one of us. Would you cause us, Lord, to blossom again. And to grow in the ways of the Lord. And so, Sitan Buruburu, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord indeed cause you to blossom in Jesus' name. As you continue to serve him, I declare you are a blessing of God. When you come in and even when you go out, Jesus still loves you the way you are. And so because the Lord has blessed you so much and in the coming days going to be glorious days for you. Give him a shout of praise as you bless the Lord this morning. 
I say give him a shout of praise, everybody sit and pray. Let us serve the Lord. Sit and buruburu. Let us serve the Lord. Please, let us serve him. Crowns are coming. We are becoming many day by day. We need your heart. Come support us. Let us serve the Lord. Tell your neighbor, let us serve the Lord. Can I receive those of you here for the very first time? You've never been here before. This is your first Sunday. Sita Boroboro. I don't want to receive you quickly. This is your first time, please, without walking out. Those of you here for the very first time, I want to receive you, please. Why don't you encourage our guests as they come? Please come here. Encourage them as they come. Where are they? Please come. This is your first time to come to sit and buru buru. Please join me here. Kindly join me. It is not easy to come in front. You don't do anything. You are just joining me here. I'm gonna pressure them in a better way as they come. Please come. Please come here. Thank you. Anyone else? I think we had more guests. We had more guests. Please come. Please come. Look at just you can face me. You can face the pastor. We had another guest here. We had only two guests today. We still thank God for you as well. Let's appreciate them in a big way, please. I want to order you over to my sister there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We want to appreciate you. The Lord bless you so much for coming. Let's appreciate them as they take their seats. I mean, as they follow my sister, you can follow her to share with you some, some encouraging ones, some tea, and that you'll be able to enjoy yourself in the presence of the Lord. Can I appreciate them one more time, Tafadali? Those of you, those of you have lifted up your hands and you want to serve God, what you're going to do is please, before you go home in the Uduma desk or all over the place where we have the ministry, actually, you're going to go and sign up whichever the department. But I won't make this humble plea to you, sit up, before each other was on grace. Please, before you go home, I have never made a request for a long time here. I want all of us kindly to walk right there because we have a ministry fair. We want to take a lot of your time. We just walk all of us there slowly. I know we cannot fit, but as many as all of you, we want to cut the, the ribbon. And we are going now to declare Sita Buru Buru Ministry Fair 2024 is open. And then you walk around, see what is happening there. I want you to support the people who serve among us. Just go and see what they normally do. Amen. So please don't walk away. Let's all of us walk there. Just go from the every tent. We have almost 27 departments. And as many tents as possible before you go home. And we truly appreciate you. Can I bless you this morning? And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall do in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So let's walk slowly. Please don't go away. 